Floating point numbers are something that computers have struggled with pretty much since they were invented. This means that you can end up with weird behavior when rounding or adding or subtracting, and especially in financial applications or data applications where the error tolerance is very small, this could become very problematic. Python is no exception to the list of languages that have this problem, but it does have a solution in its standard library in the form of the decimal module. The decimal module is designed to work with numbers in a way that a human would expect to work with them. This is probably given away by the name name, decimal, as in base 10. If you need to maintain numerical accuracy when it comes to rounding and mathematical operations, the decimal is perfect for you. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use them. Of course, if you find this video helpful at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know, and maybe subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. And if you wanna see new videos earlier than anyone else, you can become a member by using the join button below. With all that out of the way, let's see how we can use the decimal module to solve this problem. So we're starting in the terminal today. Uh, I'm going to be taking the very unusual step on this channel of starting with the real world example. I normally start with an illustrative example just to show it off and then go into a real world example that's a bit more fleshed out. I feel as though, well one, because the real world example is just a number pretty much and it would just be, I think, easier in terms of explaining everything to have the context about the problem that Decimal actually solves relative to floats and if you know anything about floats and certain issues that they have you can probably see where this is going um so a bit of background at work we have a web platform it's a data platform it handles prices and in, in what well, including averaging prices and converting between units and so you end up with i guess non-even prices I don't know the official word for it. If there is an official word for it, let me know because it'd be useful to have. But basically prices um, that don't have two significant figures. So maybe something like 10.815, uh, which is our example number for today. So this you would expect to be rounded up to £10.82 uh, because... If you know the rules of rounding, you'll know that if it ends with a five or higher, you round up. If it ends with a four or less, you round down. Simple enough. If we were to do that though, so if I were to say round and then round this to two decimal places to turn it into a proper price, you'll see we get 10.81. And this was the problem that was occurring uh, with the function because it used floats instead of decimals, even though most of the rest of the platform used decimals. So I don't know what happened there, but uh, this is the problem that was occurring. And the reason for this is float, well, just binary float representation as a whole. And ironically, we can actually use the decimal module to show off what the problem is. So we could do from decimal import decimal like that. And this decimal object is what we'll be using. We'll talk about it in a bit. But if we construct it with our float, which we can do uh, as much as we want and we actually get the right number, we can see uh, because the decimal converts it into the actual float figure, it turns into 10.8149999, etc., etc., etc. Because 10.815 doesn't have an exact representation in binary floating point, an approximation is used instead. This approximation just happens to be ever so slightly less than 10.815, which when trying to round it to two decimal places causes it to round down instead of up. So really, Python is doing its job here fine. You would expect it to do this. It's not useful for us because we would expect it to do something else in terms of how actual numbers work. So you can use the decimal to have this precision. And the decimal library was essentially designed for you to work with numbers as humans would expect them to work. So if we were to define it with a string instead, uh, 10.815 like that. We'll see that we get a decimal of 10.815 and if we try and round this to two significant figures, we get 10.82 as we would expect. And this is effectively what decimal is good for. It's useful for situations where variances like this one are just not acceptable. So in financial applications, for example, um, well, largely financial applications. And I suppose like mathematical operations and data science where things need to be uber exact, floats aren't exact enough and decimal can be. So now that we've got that context about why decimals are useful, I'm going to show you how you can work with them and how to construct them. So I'm going to do, I guess we'll call this usage.py and then from decimal import decimal as we did before. 
And then we could do say x decimal 3.14 as we did this takes it from a float and then if we print uh, x equals like that just so we can see it. If we copy that and instead of x we then have y, you can also do something like this as a string as we saw. And this gives you your infinite precision. You can also pass integers in. Um, so if you wanted to do like 314, you could do that just fine. You could also create a decimal out of a tuple, which is interesting. And this uh, gives an insight about how decimals are actually stored. So it would take a tuple like this, and it would be a three element tuple. So the first element is the sign. So for positive, it's zero. For negative, it's one. So we want 3.14, so it's going to be uh, positive, so we pass zero here. We then want to pass all the digits that would be in the number in a separate tuple. So three, one, four. We then need to pass the exponent as well to tell it where to put the decimal, uh, decimal place, if anywhere. So if you wanted the number 314, we'd put zero here. I don't know why, oh, there we go. To say that we've just wanted decimal point at the end. If you wanted uh, 31,400, you could do a two like that. Have we want minus two, because we want the decimal point to move one, two spaces to the left to be 3.14. And you'll see, if I get out of here successfully, there we go. If I run pi usage.py, we'll get, yes, yeah, so a 3.14, it doesn't have an exact representation either. And then our y and z values are both 3.14 as you would see. And this is actually how you can think of decimals uh, storing these things. So they are just a sign, and I'll actually show off if I do a minus one here. It would be, oops, no, just a one, the normal one, I'm getting confused. It would be negative 3.14. So you'd have your sign, you'd have essentially all the digits that are in the number and then where the decimal point goes. And that's all the information it needs. And you can actually do, um, Z, or we could just do z dot as tuple like that and it will give us uh, the tuple representation of any decimal we want and we can actually see in this decimal tuple version we have the sign the digits and the exponents so they're all named there um, on the topic of constructing uh, decimals you can also have an infinite decimal uh, so we can do decimal infinity so it's not the same syntax as doing it with a float and then we can print uh, and you can also have negative infinity as well if you wanted and then we can also have uh, not a number which again is not the same syntax that's gone horribly wrong there uh, it is not a number like that so it's actually more how you'd see it in javascript ironically and then if we run this we'll see that we get you know decimal infinity and then decimal not a number you can also perform all the same numerical operations that you could do with integers and floats with decimals as well. So I'm not bothering to type this out because it's just extra typing for no reason. But say if we wanted to add a decimal of 130 to a decimal of 150 and note how I've imported decimal as D here just for the sake of keeping things a bit shorter, um, we can do that just fine. We can also add and subtract. We can multiply if we wanted to. Uh, this is an example, this X up here, if I run this, of how it actually keeps significance. So 1.30 plus 10.50 equals 11.80, but it's kept all the zeros here. Uh, it's kept all the training zeros, because if you're writing it like this in the real world, you'd probably want to write it like this in the real world as well. So it keeps all that. Uh, this is an example of how arithmetic operations keep their precision. So normally if you were to do this with floats, it would come up with a, a number that wasn't quite right. So if we did, um, let's say 0.1 plus 0.1 plus... 0.1 minus 0.3, you get a number that's ever so slightly greater than zero, which is not quite what we want. Uh, with multiplication, actually, I will quickly show you this. If we were to do that, talking of, uh, of keeping the significance, if you multiply them together, it will like add the significance together, I guess is, is the way to put that. Um, so we've got two decimal places here, two decimal places here. We multiply them, we get four decimal places in total. That's something to keep in mind. Apparently that's a schoolbook approach, schoolbook in quotes in the documentation. I didn't really know it was a thing, but if it is, it is, whatever. Um, and then you can also perform like greater than or less than operations. So X is indeed greater than Y. So this would be true. 
Um, you also have some other methods for performing operations as well. So if I were to do, say, Z equals D and then 64, you could print the square root by just doing Z dot square root like that. You could get the exponent like that. You could also get the log 10 value like that. And you would uh, see, so the square root is eight. The exponent is this enormous number. And then the log 10 is this enormous number here. Or oh, it's not an enormous. It looks enormous. There's a decimal point here. And then on float numbers, so non-integers, if I make this W, one, two, three, four, dot, five, six, seven. You have some other uh, things as well. So decimal borrows floats as integer ratio uh, function or method, I should say, which if you don't know, uh, converts it into a fraction. So if we did operations now, we can see that the, the smallest ratio it can come up with is 1,234,567 over a thousand which is not the best example of that, to be completely honest. Um, if I do, if I set this to like 3.14, that might come out better. Yeah, 157 over 50. Uh, but there is also another way of rounding. Uh, and it's a slightly more powerful way, but you probably won't need it most of the time, I imagine. And it's called quantize. So you pass a decimal in here and if you were to put a decimal less than one, so 0 0.01, uh, this would now round it to two decimal places. So we should see that it's one, two, three, four point five seven. If we just give it a decimal of one, it will round it to the nearest whole number like that. If we gave it one point naught naught, it would also round it to two decimal places. And then I don't really know what if I haven't tried what happens if you put something like that in there. Looks like it'll just do, so I think it takes the format of the decimal. Um, so it, I, I don't think the value actually matters. I think it's just the format, yeah. So it makes this decimal match the format of this decimal, essentially. Which actually, now that I look at it like that, is more useful than I would you give it credit for. So that's a lot of information kind of thrown out all in one go. I do want to quickly talk about one more thing, but I'll keep it brief. Uh, we we'll call it context.py and these are decimal contexts. So if I import decimal and then for convenience, we'll do from decimal to import decimal. You can get uh, a context that decimals will run under. And if I run py context.py, uh, that has not, I, I did not mean to do that. <laughs> I meant to do get context. So you can get the context like this <clears throat> and this will give you a context object with all the defaults. So precision is 28, so that means the precision will be 28 decimals by default. You can raise and lower this if you want to. Uh, you also have rounding, uh, round half even. This mode is essentially what we would consider rounding. There is a mode, I forget what the constants are called, but you can set it to always round up. So you can set it to do a ceiling operation or you can set it to like a truncate mode. It's not called truncate. I think it's just round down, maybe. I don't remember. Um, but you can actually change this context uh, as much as you want. So you can do decimal dot get context dot prec or precision. That was a bit of a weird way of saying that. Equals something like twelve. And now, if we were to do x equals decimal one divided by decimal seven, and this is the example used in the documentation, presumably because it is a recurring number, <clears throat> we get 12 digits. If I were to get rid of this, we'd go back to 28. If I were to set this like 250, we would get 250 um, decimals worth of precision. And the, the, the context takes place at this point. So you see we printing here, it still thinks it's 28. So if we were to move this up, we would get 28 um, figures of precision because the, the context was only changed down here. One other thing you can do with context, and this is the last thing I'm showing off in this video, is you can set a context for a specific decimal value if you want or a specific decimal instance, but only some of it actually what only one specific part of it is actually um looked at in this case so if we were to do 
y equals decimal. And then we see if I, you pass in the value, but you can also pass in a context, which is a context object. Um, and this is only used, I think it says here actually, uh, the context does not affect the conversion is only passed to determine if the invalid operation trap is active. So that's the only thing it looks for. So if we go back to our terminal, we see these traps here, invalid operation, division by zero and overflow. If we were to have a decimal that did not have uh, the, the invalid operation uh, trap active, and we'll just import context from here, and then we'll say, uh, give it an invalid figure. So if we were to do this now, and let me just do this to show what it's doing. Uh, you would get an invalid operation. So this trap would be triggered and then you would get a, a, an error back. If you didn't want that, you could disable the trap for this decimal by doing context equals context traps and then just, I guess, an empty list. Uh, I, you could keep the other traps if you wanted, but I'm just not going to. And in this instance, if you do this, it will return not a number instead. And that's all that does. I don't know why that isn't just a flag or or not a flag, but just a keyword argument saying like check valid number equals true or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why you have to go through all this to uh, just to do that. There must be a reason. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to disable that check for whatever reason, then that's how you do it. So that is a crash course in decimals. Let me know in the comments how you're planning to use them now that you know about them. If you want to know all the other ways that Python is awesome, then you can check out the Python is awesome playlist that I've got linked in the end cards. I'll see you in the next one for whatever we do next.